Hello everyone, it's your girl Miracle Sins, and you're watching the GSL Talk Show. Tonight we're going to be chatting with Miss Christy Cerniglia, and she is a wife, a mother, and much, much more. So stay tuned. Welcome back to the GSL Talk Show. I am here with Miss Christy Cern Niglia. <laughs> right? Right? Do that, do that. <laughs> All right. I want to make sure I almost said Mernor Julia again. So I was like, no, 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 that's not it. <laughs> but yes, welcome. Welcome to the GSL Talk Show. How are you doing? Oh, thank you, Miracle. I'm really happy to be here and I'm doing great. Awesome. Happy to have you as well. Um, I thought we were going to look past each other in, in the wind, as they say, but um, I'm glad that we are here today and can have this conversation. So tell us where you are and a little bit about yourself. Okay. I am in Lexington, Kentucky, and I am married to Rusty. We're going to have our 30th anniversary in May. Nice. Crazy, right? Awesome. Uh, we have four kids and two grandkids, even. Oh, so. that's so sweet. Awesome. Wonderful. Well, congratulations on the 30 years. That is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, listen, we look, merry people, you know, it, it, it see, it's success is out here, y'all. <laughs> we got to get some wisdom from you as well about, you know, how you made it to 30 years and, and, you know, help us try to try to get it there. You know, I know I'm I'm on your this will be year eight this year. So, you know, in September, but still, you know, so we passed the seven hump because I, I heard there's like a, a hump for seven years or something like that. That's so, what they say. Yeah. <laughs> so we passed that. I mean, you know, well, we're almost past it. We're, we're getting there this year. I'm claiming it, though. So. <laughs> so, yes, for the 30 years, I would love to hear whatever wisdom you would like to bestow. <laughs> Yeah. You know what? I found myself um, really uneasy um, during year 21 of our marriage. Mm. And I couldn't figure out why I thought, what, what's wrong? Everything's fine. Why am I feeling this just unsettled? Ugh. Mm. And then I realized that, you know what? My parents divorced at 21 years. Oh. And so I realized that there was something in me that was kind of like waiting for the shoe to drop or something. Mm. And when I realized that, then I kind of was able to get free from it because I realized, no, no, like this is not I, I am not my mom. He's not my dad. This is not the same situation. And mm -hmm. I need to let go of that and live in today, you know? Yeah. Look, that's already good. Yes, that is good right there for us to reflect on. I know a, a previous guest mentioned um, that there was um, the same type of hump in, in some of the later years as well. I can't remember the exact number he said, but mm -hmm. um, he mentioned that as well. So I don't know if it's around that 20 mark or 30 or something like that. But um, I'm glad that you were able to push through it and, and realize that, you know, that there was something that was kind of maybe some um, past hurt or past, you know, or just by witnessing their situation, but then also understanding that, hey, I'm in my own situation. Mm -hmm. So yes, that, mm -hmm. look, take the notes, y'all. Let's take the notes. Cause mm -hmm. I mean, there's so much to say just about that, but how alone, you know, so. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. you know, my parents didn't know the Lord. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, right there, that's a big difference right there mm -hmm. from them dealing with their marriage to me dealing with mine. Thank you, Lord, that we have God in our home, in family, and that makes the biggest difference of all, right? Yes, it does. Yes, ma'am, it does. I mean, people don't like to think that, right? We we like to think that we can live without God and that, oh, you know, we don't need that Jesus thing, whatever the case may be. And it's like, well, you know, 
not according to scripture, but I mean, he just gives us so much grace and mercy and, and free will that we just think, you know, that we're in control until we humbly find out we're not. <laughs> so, Well, that's what I would say. Apart mm -hmm. from Jesus, I would be so full of pride and mm -hmm. so full of wanting my way and believing mm -hmm. that I was right and he's all wrong. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how we would get to, I don't know how we would have gotten to this point mm. because there's way too much pride and, um, and rebellion in me mm. than to be able to, you know what I mean? Like, because mm -hmm. uh, humility and taking a look at my side of the street has been a big part of our most recent transformation in our marriage is mm. just taking a look and saying, what, what, what's my part in this and what can mm -hmm. I do differently and how can I show up differently and better? Because I really believe as humans, we, we mirror each other. And so if I show up today rude and with an attitude, that's mm -hmm. going to impact the way you, you know, show up to me. Mm -hmm. But if I show up cheerful and kind, then that's going to impact, you know, and that happens exactly. so much in the ha in the home, I think. Mm -hmm. And as women, we are very influential as far as we are setting the tone, setting the temperature for the household. And so mm -hmm. when we show up, you know, with joy, it affects everybody. And when we show up cranky, it affects everybody. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Listen, look, say it loud for the people in the back. <laughs> Yes. I mean, that is so true. Like, first of all, the accountability um, that you just mentioned of, again, holding yourself accountable to say, hey, you know, OK, what, what's my part in this? I like mm -hmm. I think a lot of people have that issue. Like, that's the first thing we, we don't want to do that. We don't want to think that anything is wrong with us. It's all the other person. Yeah. Um, when at the end of the day, again, God will put that mirror of the word right right in front of you and say, hey, you know, you may have gotten here, but now it's time to elevate and, and grow even more. And and I, like the other day um, on the daily inspiration segment, I just pretty much, I, I felt like what God was saying through me that morning was like, we should just go ahead and get in our mind that, you know, there's going to be always growth. There's going to be always mm -hmm. challenge. You know, there's going to be always something that's going to show you that, okay, so now this is how you get to be more like me. And now mm -hmm. here's a little bit more so you can be more like me. And I'm not, I'm not saying like miracle. I'm talking about this is what Christ is saying to us. Be more like him, be more like him. Yes. And, and so, um, and it's just going to keep going that way until, you know, he decides to take us home, whatever the case may be. And so um, I think we just go ahead and get that in our heart and mind to understand mm -hmm. that, okay, I'm, I've not arrived and I'm not going to arrive. <laughs> you know, I'm not perfect, you know, and, right. and none of us are. And, and we're all going to be like they said, that work in progress. Yeah, okay, I might be perfect in Christ and he's made me beautifully mm -hmm. the way I am and all that wonderful stuff as Thank well. You. But what I'm saying is there's always going to be growth. There's always going to be something to work on. So as much as we can point the fingers at someone else, we can also, mm -hmm. like, you know, it's better to take about accountability for ourselves, in my little humble opinion. It's better to say, okay, I know there's a two, just a two-person situation and both of us are involved and, you know, all that type of stuff, right? But then I, I just... For, for me, I guess I, I took some time to do that. And I thought that everybody would do that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but as I talk to people, it's like people are really struggling with that. You know, mm -hmm. that just that part. Not mm -hmm. even talking about like how they're interacting with the other person and stuff like that. It's mm -hmm. just just a part of saying, hey, something might be wrong with me and how what I'm doing and how I'm doing. Well, you know what the good news is, though, Miracle, if you if if your happiness is tied up in your partner, Mm. and he's not going to change, mm -hmm. where does that leave you? Mm. You're hopeless. You have no hope and no power mm -hmm. and you're just mm -hmm. a victim, right? Right. Yeah. But if there's something that I can do, if I can change myself, all of a sudden I have this power, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm mm -hmm. not a victim and I'm not hopeless. So women ask me all the time because one of my one of the things I say over and over again is you can transform your marriage with or without your husband's active involvement. Mm. And a lot of times women will come against that and they'll say, well, why should I have to do everything? Why do I have to do all the work? And I go, you know what? Because you're powerful, because you're mm. influential. Mm -hmm. And aren't you glad that there is something that you can do? That you don't have to just sit in this powerless victim. I'm unhappy until he does X, Y, or Z. Yes. No, there's something I can do. 
Mm -hmm. And that, I, I'm like you, I want to keep improving. I want to keep getting better. I know I've not arrived. And, but it gives me, it gives me some power in the situation. I can get happy. Girl, listen, we already done, you done dropped so many mics already for me because um, I'm glad you brought that back up again as well is that because again, we, we like to hit people like to say, oh, you know, the Bible is just, you know, doesn't have all this negative stuff to say about women and da, 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 da. And you just showed us how much power we have. We are influential to our husbands. We're influential to the household. You talked about the temperature and how our mood is going to affect everybody and all those different things. And so I don't know if it's just we we want to give up our power or is it that we don't want the responsibility? I don't know what it is that we want to just hold on to the narratives or the victimhood side of things, you know? Um, and, I, and I'm talking about women in particular. I mean, then, of course, you know, I'm not saying that, of course, there are men out there that like, you know, I guess lord over their women and, and things of that nature or. Mm -hmm. You know, there there are those type of men out there, and and I don't think they're biblical men. You know, I don't think they're godly men that are doing those mm -hmm. things. But you know, there are some that are out here, you know, doing the wrong things. But at the same time, you know, you just mentioned how much power we do have. Like, okay, even if my husband isn't ready or willing and all that to change, I can still have, you know, uh, some power in the situation. I can still mm -hmm. control how I feel, what I bring to the table in regards to. And I'm not just talking about money and stuff because we know people like bring that up. But you bring it to the table. No, like, well, can you bring the peace, love, joy, harmony, <laughs> you know, that type of stuff? Like, okay, I'm going to still be at peace. I'm going to still bring joy to the situation. Um, and, and that could have so much influence over your spouse because, you know, not to be like it, just because you can't argue with somebody that's happy or something. But um, I guess I'm reminded of that, those verses in the New Testament where they talk about like the spouse. Um, when they specifically say the wife, actually, they they talk about like the. Um, if I'm not mistaken. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, if you um, if I'm saying it wrong, and people in, in the comments, y'all can correct me if I'm wrong as well. But um, if I'm not mistaken, it's talking about like how, let's say, for example, the wife, um, if the husband um, is an unbeliever and the wife becomes a believer, that if, if he's willing to stay with her and things like that, then they stay together, and that ultimately can be influential to. Yes. The husband and and I actually had a couple on here with that exact testimony, mm -hmm. um, how she came to Christ and she was praying for her you know, her husband who's like an atheist like was all against it all this type of stuff, and he was the main one talking in the episode you know about how God had changed their lives and things like that and so again we why do you think it is and I know we get so deep and we didn't even really get into like what all you got going on so of course we're gonna do that too <laughs> but I'm I'm curious to just like to see what wisdom you have here in regards to like, why do you think we as women, um, it seems like we want to give up our power that we do have. Mm -hmm. um, it, well, what just came into my head is that like, I ultimately I think we want the power that the men has, which is again, another biblical thing <laughs> and another issue. But I mean, I, I would love to hear like, if your, your thoughts in regards to like, why do you think we're like that? You know, mm -hmm. we want to, hold on to oh we don't have power oh the bible is against us oh the men are such and such we rather hold on to that than understand the power that we actually do have mm -hmm. and walk in that yeah like, yeah I, don't, I, don't know. I know for me i didn't realize probably how influential i was and also i'll tell you the big thing for me my focus was in the wrong place my focus was constantly on the things he was doing wrong, according mm -hmm. to my beliefs of what was wrong. Mm -hmm. I thought about that and I and I talked about that and I mm -hmm. asked him to change. And we had these state of the union addresses where I would say, you need to and you need to adjust this. And I just spent a lot of time messing around over on his paper instead mm. of focusing on me, right? I was busy mm. working on the spec when I should have been yanking out the log, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's one of the big things that I've learned is that if I will stay busy on my, on my paper, on my side of the street, mm. doing things that make me happy and, mm. and bettering myself, then mm. I'm not tinkering around over on his side because you know what? When I do that, it comes off to him as control and disrespect. And mm. neither one of those things are attractive. 
Mm. Neither one of those things draw him to me. They both repel me. And Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but I want to show up as a feminine woman. I want him Mm -hmm. to show up as a masculine man. And I want us to be drawn together like the most powerful magnet. Right. Mm -hmm. And when I show up controlling and disrespectful, that it's repelling and it doesn't work. So all Mm -hmm. the things that I wanted from him, I was, I was doing the wrong thing to get him. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. when I started, I began to understand what it looked like to not be controlling and to be respectful in a way that made sense to him. Oh Mm -hmm. yeah. They start coming together and it's beautiful and it's not as hard as it seems, but it's nothing we've been taught about. I mean, how many Mm -hmm. classes have you had on relationships? They don't do that. They're busy teaching you about geometry in school Mm. when they should have been talking to us about how to love each other. Right. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, we, there's so much there because yeah. um, I, well, I, one, one, you guys see I'm already the amen corner over here. Like, yep, mm, yep. Because <laughs> I definitely could uh, agree and relate to a lot of what you're saying. Um, but that's a great question in regards to like, you know, how many classes have we had? And um, and and this is another, uh, women, I, you know, this is for us, I guess right now, we, we are dropping the ball. The elder women, you know, sorry, you know, whatever. You know, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but we're dropping the ball in, that, in regards to that because, Again, yeah, women aren't necessarily, you know, I guess getting the training on like being a wife and loving your husband, loving your children and all those different like the good godly principles that God tells us to pass on down, you know. Um, And then it's like we're out here just trying to figure it out ourselves and then we see how that looks, you know. Um, So, I mean, not to just point and blame nobody, but I mean. If you are in a situation or if you are elder, in my opinion, then yeah, you might need to start a class. This might be your call right here, you know, <laughs> start mm-hmm. going, go ahead and get this women's class together. You know, let's get this training or whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. And let's see, can we change the next generation with, you know, some good yes. mothers and wives out here and stuff. I mean, I'm just throwing it out there and I don't know if I'm talking to myself. I mean, you know, I, I feel like I need to get a few more years in game before, <laughs> but still, you know. Um. <laughs> You're older than somebody, right? Right. Yeah. That's somebody's true. older that's than you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But mo- a lot of us haven't grown up and mm-hmm. seen a beautiful example of a godly marriage. I did that's not see true. that growing up. Mm-hmm. I think most people didn't. And so, yeah, we're trying to create something that we've never maybe even witnessed. Mm-hmm. And that can be difficult. But mm-hmm. I'm here to say I was not raised in the church. I was not raised to know the Lord and neither was my mm-hmm. husband. And we got saved after we were married. It's a wonderful story. And God built a Christian marriage, a Christian household and Christian, you know, children, everything. I am amazed and in awe of what he has done. You know, he is Mm -hmm. able, Mm -hmm. he is able to make beauty from ashes. And so Mm -hmm. we can find the resources and the mentors and the books and the people and, and God will guide us to do that. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, but how much better if we were able to live with it and see it, you know, in action. Yes. yes. And I mean, well, hopefully, you know, again, I'm sure your your family is being a shining light in not only, you know, the rest of your family or the extended family, but then the, you know, community and whatnot that you all mm-hmm. are in. And I mean, and there are good examples. We're not saying that there's not nobody out here, you know, but what we're saying is that, you know, there should be more of this. Is, is mm-hmm. I think it's the point here, you know. Um, so I'm I'm glad to to hear. I mean, you know, I would love to hear the story, but I mean, no no pressure if you don't want to. If it's if you feel like it's too long, or you know, if you feel like you want to come back and talk about that another time. But I mean, you you feel free. I mean, if you would like to tell us the story, I'm all ears because I mean, you know, it's it's great to hear how God, you know God is moving, especially again in a in the couple's life that wasn't necessarily instill in childhood because you know I think a lot of people have that testimony as well maybe they're not getting the parenting right they're not getting the um, mentorship and whatnot uh, in in the younger years and you're getting it now whatever the case may be and so I mean it could be a powerful thing to share I'm just you know no pressure though (laughs) Uh, I love to share how the Lord reached out to me because 
I didn't really have any Christian friends or family at the time. Uh, mm. My husband's sister is a believer, is a beautiful believer. And okay. occasionally when we would go home to visit his family, we would go to church with them. Mm. And when we did, his sister, we would be singing the songs and his sister would raise up her hands and she would close her eyes and she would worship. And I would sit next to her and think, what is she doing? Why is she acting that way? What mm. is happening in her? Mm. Like, I'm mm -hmm. here. I'm singing the same song. I don't feel anything. What's going on with her? You know, mm. but mm -hmm. I knew she was genuine. I knew it wasn't yeah. an act. I knew she was real, but yeah. I did not know what was happening. And mm. I will tell you that the day that the Lord saved me, it was a Sunday and I got saved on my way to church the, the first time I'd been not ever in my life, but the first time yeah. to this church. And, okay. and I'm convinced that he saved me on the way. And yeah. when I was driving home, well, when I got home, my husband said, what happened? Because I was crying. So what happened mm. to you? I said, I got it. Mm. He said, you got what? I said, I got what your sister has. Mm. He was like, what are you talking about? The Holy Spirit. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And mm. I didn't know it. Until mm -hmm. it was a couple of weeks later when I read the scripture and I can't remember exactly where it is. I want to say Corinthians where it says someone without the spirit doesn't understand the things of the spirit. They're foolish mm -hmm. them because mm -hmm. some things are just discerned by the spirit. And I thought, that's mm -hmm. it. That's what I got on the way to church. I got the Holy Spirit. And yeah. that's why I understood for the first time when the pastor began to speak. And do you know what that pastor said? He said, today I'm going to preach out, uh, I'm going to preach about Joseph and that's in the book of Genesis. And for those of you who don't know, that's the very first book of the Bible. And I was so blessed by that because I couldn't have found any other book in the Bible except Genesis because it was the first one. I could not have found mm -hmm. any other. And mm -hmm. I felt like he was talking directly to me. And I thought at that point, I was 28 years old. I thought I was the only adult in the world who didn't know about God. And I mm. felt so foolish and so like left behind. I mm. felt that it was too late for me because mm. you had to grow up in the church and you had to go to children's church and you had to understand all the Bible stories and all those things. And it was too mm. late for me, not to mention the fact that I had sinned. I knew that mm -hmm. I had done all of these things wrong. And mm -hmm. so I just made these assumptions and I'm sure the enemy was right in the middle of that mm -hmm. telling me it's too late for you. You're too <laughs> far gone. Right. Mm -hmm. But I came across a gal that I worked with and to me, she was a big sinner, a really big sinner. She had mm -hmm. lots of stories beyond mm -hmm. anything that I had ever done. And mm -hmm. so when she got saved and she began going to church and her life began to turn all the way around, I said to myself, well, maybe if God can do something with her, maybe he can still do something with me. Of course, yes. And you know what she would say to me when I would ask her questions? I'd say, what about this? What about this? And she'd go, you know what? I don't know about that, but I'll tell you what I do know. Mm. And I just love that because so many Christians think that they can't be evangelistic, that they can't share the gospel with people because they're not a theologian or they haven't mm -hmm. studied all of this. But let me tell you, this girl was so effective and she didn't wow. know one scripture to tell me about. She mm. just knew what God was doing in her heart and in her life and that she was never going to be the same again. And that's mm -hmm. what spoke to me. That's what yeah. I needed. I needed a life transforming God. Yes. Yeah. Listen, they say power in the testimony like that. I mean, there you go. There's one prime example right there, <laughs> you know, um, and that's why we all need to. Um, I know. I think we think so deeply. Right. We think about all oh, these titles and all this different type of stuff when we think about making disciples or when we think about, uh, a, I guess, doing a great commission and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But it's like, no, nah, it could just be like you just said, hanging out with your home girl. And this thing, you know, y'all talking about Jesus, you know what I mean? Like it could be just, you know, writing that blog, whatever it is, you know, um, God can use you and it. And that's an amazing testimony. Mm -hmm. And and obviously, and so, so you, it sounds like you got the book first, as they say, <laughs> 
And so then how, how did your husband, um, like, or do you know in regards to, he, does he have to tell his own side of the story? <laughs> or do you know no, a little you bit know about- what? He, he, had, he had walked to the aisle and made a profession of faith as a teenager. Okay. But I always tell everybody, he obviously wasn't following the Lord when he met me or he wouldn't have married me. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so he, um, you know what happened to him? This is hilarious because everybody always asks me about three months after my salvation. And I was going to church every time they opened the doors because I said, I'm 28 years behind. I got to catch up. Right. <laughs> so he finally said to me, you know what? I think I'm going to start going to church with you. And I said, you are? And he goes, yeah. He goes, I'm afraid they're going to think you're single. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Whatever. Yeah, that right? mm -hmm. Whatever mm -hmm. it takes. Exactly. Exactly. But you know, no. God brought him along and God, and God brought us together um, moving towards Aww. him. And, you know, it took time. It wasn't an overnight thing, but it was a good thing. And God is good. He knew what he was doing. Oh, that's so sweet. I'm loving it. And so was this before the kids um, yeah. were adding into your life? Wow. Look at that. Look, right on time for the next yeah. generation. So now yeah. they're now they're getting everything that you that you feel like you didn't get, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Look at God. Look at God. All of it. You know, wow. I grew up, I didn't know why we celebrated Christmas or Easter. I thought Christmas was about Santa and I thought Easter Bunny was the whole deal of Easter. And I mm. knew there was something religious, but I didn't know what it was. And mm. when I told my parents that as an adult, they didn't believe me. They said, nah, -uh, you knew. <laughs> How would I have known? They thought I would mm. just pick it up along the way. No. Nah. Man. And see, that's a, Sorry, I know we have these conversations every now and then, GSL people, but like, I mean, that's how we as parents drop the ball as well. Like, I know we talk about a lot about people dropping the ball today, but I mean, you know, um, we can't just expect our kids to know. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong, man. I got a five year old and he talks like he's a grown man and I, I have to remind myself that he's just five <laughs> and that he don't know some stuff, you know, <laughs> and I'm like, OK, he, he doesn't probably fully understand this or that or whatever. But yeah. We got to teach, man. You know, we got to teach our kids. Like, how how would you know, you know? Right. Um, so no no shades to your parents or anything. I'm just saying parents in right. general, let, let right. us be better, you know. Um, let us yeah. keep these things in mind, um, you know, you know, and stuff like that. Because, I mean, it has a huge impact. Like, long story short, I'll just tell you real quick. Because I, I think my people that listen to me on here, because I talk every day. So I think y'all know these things already. But, um. For, for you, right, uh, a little back situation about me real quick. Um, long story short, uh, last year or the year before? It might have been the year before. Yeah, the, oh, the year before. Um, you know, we were just getting out of pandemic, all that type of stuff, right? And, um, you know, my son was, what, three, whatever time, however old he was at that time. And um, my husband, he doesn't necessarily um, go to church like that. Um, I think he's still trying to understand the fellowship aspect, you know, things like that. I feel like he's coming more now and we praying for him and stuff like that. But um, at that time or whatever, um, we're all mostly at home because everybody was at home. Right. Mm -hmm. And I was getting my word, you know, I'm doing my thing with the juice and then, you know, I'm studying and all this different type of stuff, but I felt led it was around summertime. I felt led to get back in. I was like, I need to go back to the building. Um, not just even for me, but also for our son, because, you know, I just know the importance of instilling, you know, the values and whatnot and the children and whatnot. You know, so that was on my heart. And I was like, let me go. And then when I went back, I was like, you know what? Let me, I'm going to challenge myself. And I was just kind of like sharing it on social media as well. Like, okay, I'm challenging myself. And by sharing it, I'm holding myself accountable to do this mm -hmm. summer Sunday challenge. And I'm going to go every Sunday this summer, you know? Um, and pretty much was just doing that. Didn't know any of the things that God was getting ready to do because mm -hmm. he done did some amazing things since then. But at that time, I'm just thinking about my son. I'm just thinking about how we're going, you know, and stuff like that. Um, and I'll be praying for my husband, you know, whatever, whatever, but, but we, I'm taking the kid. Cause at the end of the day, somebody got to step up as a parent in the situation. So I'm going, we doing the challenge. Right. And, and it, there were even times where he would go with his Nana or somewhere that, you know, he would be, my son would be with like, you know, spend the night with his Nana or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I would still go. Cause I'm like, it's, it's Sunday. I'm going. And I said, summer Sunday challenge. I'm going, would you know, like that next year, um, my son, like we were, um, there was a lot of other things that, that was going, you know, the rest of the year and stuff, but he brought in new, new year singing hallelujah. 
Mm. Um, like, and it was a song I was listening to in the car and stuff. Like, like Hallelujah, like one of those Christmas songs. But he brought in the, that year last year. He brought in a year singing that song. Um, now, a few months after, I call it last year, Bunnies 2023, right? Um, I knew that I knew stuff was changing and stuff was coming, but I didn't know what. But I was like, I feel like finance is about to change. I feel like mm-hmm. I need to get ready to be a good steward. You know, I was telling people all this stuff on my daily inspiration. And next thing I know, a few months into it, actually today is the anniversary of um, when I um, I pitched a couple of small groups because I was trying to figure out what small group I was going to be in. Then I felt led to lead a couple of them. So I was like, okay, mm-hmm. I'm going to lead one for kids. I'm going to lead one for, you know, anybody that wants to get on this Bible study journey that I'm on. So I was doing that. And then next thing I know, I'm meeting people that, um, you know, are over the children's ministry. So the next thing I know, a few months later, I'm getting offered an elementary coordinator job at the church. I'm like, oh, OK, well, uh, you know, sure. You know, <laughs> I mean, I need, you know, it's part time or whatever. But I'm like, hey, you know, I need income right now anyway. This must have been that abundant 2023 thing. I was getting ready. You know, I, he told me funds was coming. I didn't know how, you know, and I'm like, OK, cool. And so then that, so that started to shift. So now my son is with me, but I definitely got to be there every Sunday anyway. And then, um, and he's there with me and stuff like that. And he worships, he like, he loves going like anytime mm-hmm. he's like, are we going to church? You know, mm-hmm. and, and, and that's, and that is the shift. You know what I mean? That's the impact that we can have by just being obedient and, mm-hmm. um, just doing what we were supposed to do as parents and stuff like who knows like let's just say i didn't take the summer sunday challenge would i have the job at the church right now mm-hmm. would i be talking to you right now? i don't know like would would my son be you know mm-hmm. as into church as he is right now like you know it's just so many different amazing things that has happened where mm-hmm. I, I i just don't think we see the impact that we can have with mm-hmm. the choices that we make you know there's and, that influence again right look mm-hmm. at your influence Congratulations. I just want to acknowledge you for taking that on, that challenge. And then you obviously showed up with joy every week and that was passed down to him. And now he knows that church is a joyful place where we go and we worship with our brothers and sisters and everything. So well done. Really yeah, well done. What an I'm trying, I'm trying to be a good mama. <laughs> yes. You know what else I love that you said? I love that you said that you're putting son, your son in these positions with these other beautiful Christian people mm-hmm. who are going to show him the way that they walk with Jesus, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And I think it's important because I know I have four kids. They're One of them is kind of like me. The other three are not li- really like me. They have a different mm-hmm. personality and a different makeup. Mm-hmm. They need to see other Christian women in action so yeah. that they don't think my way is the only way because my way yeah. probably isn't going to fit necessarily for for them so they mm-hmm. get to see these other christian women and how they walk with the lord and be mm-hmm. like hmm, you know and mm-hmm. so i love that that your son's being exposed to lots of different christian people the, the fellowship part you know what i'm saying like i know we like to think we can just do things alone right i i actually was trying <laughs> this would be uh, telling on myself, but I'm being, I, I try to be honest here on this platform. Like, you know, I was wondering if I'm being a little bit prideful or whatever lately, because yeah, you were talking about that earlier. I'm like, ooh, that sounds like <laughs> me a little bit. But um, I'm also really short, man. I know I keep telling my stories, but let me try to, try to make them short. So um, basically, there's this this show I'm getting ready to do. And um, I had to, my, the client, they wanted me to bring four actors. Technically, I could do this show by myself, right? <laughs> you know, I don't need to bring the actors. But, you know, they, they request the actors. So I'm, I'm like, okay, let me bring the actors out of that. You know, say, do what I said I was going to do. But of course, when you add more people into your situation, you got to go, you know, you know, personality, you know, all the stuff, right? And um, and then some people weren't responding as quickly as I needed them to. And I'm like, oh, Lord, are they not taking this seriously? Do I need to replace them? You know, all the stuff. And I'm like, I could just do this by myself. Like, <laughs> and, you know, and stuff like that. And I think we all think that we can just live alone. We don't need, again, we said, I said that earlier, we don't need God. We don't need nobody else, mm-hmm. stuff like that. And it's like, no, like you just said, the impact that someone else can have, you know, um, encouragement and in- inspiring the next generation, or you can be that, what somebody needs to see, you know, and things like that. Um, the church itself is just, it's the play, like, I can worship at home, right? And, mm-hmm. and, and yeah, I can get my word online, 
But there's mm -hmm. nothing like being in the room. Like, let's say you you weren't standing next to your sister and, and you know what I mean? And getting that moment, like all of that stuff matters. And I think, um, and God made us this way to have to be relational and, and stuff, like mm -hmm. not only with each other, but with, with him. And so uh, I don't know why we try to be islands. You know, we try to, oh, we don't need nobody and stuff or independent and stuff. And that, that those are great attributes to have in some in some ways, but I don't think we can get away with like um, thinking we can just do it all alone. You know what I mean? Um, and, it's and, true. and marriage is nice. good for us too, right? We need somebody mm -hmm. to rub up against and get rid of those rough edges, right? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you know anybody who lives alone and has everything their way all the time. And they can have a really hard time then meshing with others because mm -hmm. they're used to everything going their way. And it gets, I think we get real um, prickly mm -hmm. <laughs> when we have our own way all the time. Spoiled <laughs> and all that good stuff. <laughs> yes, I, I definitely, I, I've been witnessing that. And I mean, hey, I remember me back in the day, I was thinking, but see, I was always like wanting and desiring, again, to, I guess the life that I have today, like, being married and all that type of stuff. I, I think I always mm -hmm. was aspiring for that. And I'm like, why don't I have it? And, you know, I was going through my whole journey, which is the inspiration behind GSL. But anyway, um, but yeah, I mean, there there are, yeah, let's talk a little. Go, you can go ahead and talk about the marriage, honey, because the people, that, you know, they, they looking down on marriage these days. Mm -hmm. It ain't nothing but a piece of paper, they want to say. Uh, men are out here talking about something. It ain't good for a man to get married because the, the woman can just take everything and, you know, all of that type of stuff. So what, what do you, you want to share with us about marriage, Miss mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> marriage. marriage is getting a bad rap in 2024, right? Yeah. Oh, but what a beautiful thing it is to be committed to someone for life mm -hmm. and to stick together um, through the the hard times and to have a partner through those difficulties and everything. And, you know, I tell my kids all the time, you're not going to get married without some strife. Right. I mean, which human being are you going to live with for the rest of your life and not have some arguments? Now, come on, you can't <laughs> live with your best friend without some strife. So um, we're going to have some difficult times and the Bible's clear about that too, right? Mm -hmm. That things mm -hmm. are going to be difficult, but we can overcome, especially with the Lord's help. Mm -hmm. But what happened with me is about three years ago, my husband and I were having some, um, some issues, one issue in particularly that we just could not solve. And we sought some counseling. I read books all the time. I've read all the books. We've been to the conferences, all of those things. And we just weren't finding what we needed to solve this mm -hmm. one um, problem. And so mm -hmm. I want to show you the book that I came across was um, The Surrendered Wife. Mm. It's also out there as The Empowered Wife, either one of these, Laura Doyle. So I found these books and they were different than everything else that I was reading. And mm. they actually had some very specific things that I could experiment with and some things to say and some things to do that were very practical. And I love practical. Mm -hmm. So I began to experiment with those things and mm -hmm. I began to see my husband responding to me a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. And so um, eventually after I felt like I had exhausted the books, I reached out for coaching okay. and I got a relationship coach. Oh, what a blessing, wonderful blessing that was for me. We met every other week. Mm. And one of the things that she did was she just stood for my marriage. She just said, Christy, I believe in you. I believe in your union, your husband. She always was listening mm -hmm. for the great qualities in my husband and then pointing them out to me. I hear that mm. your husband loves you. I hear that he wants to make you happy. I hear mm. that he's a hard worker. I hear he took the trash out this morning, you know, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. So many things that I had been overlooking. Overlooking. Right. Mm. I found out that I had some blind spots that I wasn't mm. aware of. I mm -hmm. found out that I was stingy with my gratitude toward mm. him. Okay. I found out that I complained a lot and I didn't mm. think I was a complainer, but I found out I complained a lot. So I discovered a lot about myself in some ways that I could show up differently and be a better version of me. Mm. And, 
and they weren't hard other than they were hard on my pride, right? <laughs> but I made the changes and I used the coaching. And after I started getting coaching, I said, this is what I've got to do. I've got to become mm -hmm. a relationship coach like my mm -hmm. coach because she was so fantastic. So I went through a year training program online okay. and was certified back in April. And so now I have the privilege of coaching women, coaching wives. And I want to tell you that it's not just about my marriage. It definitely, that was my focus, right? Mm -hmm. But I began to use these skills with my mom. I began mm -hmm. to use these skills with my brother. I began to use these skills with my teenagers and my adult mm -hmm. kids. Mm -hmm. And I saw a difference in all of the relationships. Right. So yeah. I'm just really, really passionate because I told you my parents divorced my senior year of high school, and that was very painful for me. And I really mm. think it could have been avoided, um, but they didn't have the skills and they didn't have the Lord. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to be there. If there's a woman out there listening and she may be in crisis, she, her husband may be involved with another woman, or she mm. may just be bored, okay, mm -hmm. and needs some revival. But mm -hmm. I want to be there for her. If she wants to stay married and for her marriage to work, I want to support her and help her to make some changes that will draw him back, that will give them back that connection that they had in the beginning when they were first dating and they mm -hmm. were crazy about each other. And mm -hmm. she never criticized him back then. She laughed at all his jokes. <laughs> mm -hmm. I want to get back to that, you know? Yes, yes. Oh, I love it. I think. That is um, definitely important and needed because, again, we, we like to just drop it, right? We like to just give up and say, oh, well, I don't need this. I can get someone else or whatever. Um, and then and not knowing, like, again, well, there's so much there. You know, yeah. there's so much there because then the kids, like you said, you were affected even, you know, as a senior in high school, yeah. you know, you were affected um, by the split of your parents and things like that. And, you know, it, it just really does have an effect on just everything, your entire family, your, you know, community, you never know, like how much effect that you really have. And so, um, yeah, man, you're out here doing some great things and stuff. So how is it going? How is the marriage coaching going or the women's coaching? How, how would you, how would you relationship coach, right? Yeah. Relationship okay. coaching. Okay. It's going great. really well. I have a four week workshop where mm. I bring women in and it's live on zoom and I do mm. it four weeks in a row and I teach them six intimacy skills that mm. they can use in their marriage. Mm. And that's mostly teaching. But then after that, we can do the private one on one coaching where I can speak directly to what they're dealing with. They will bring a specific challenge to me like this is what happened. We were arguing about money last night or whatever mm. the situation is. And then we talk about it and mm. it's really up to them. I know what's best for me, but I don't mm -hmm. know what's best for you. You know your marriage, you know your husband, you know your situation. So what I want to do is help you come to the decision of the best way to approach this using the using mm -hmm. the six intimacy skills. But it's really fun and very rewarding. Well, awesome. Listen, but well, it sounds like you on the brink of that, what we were talking about earlier, you know, training the wives up and whatnot. I mean, it might not, I don't know if that part two of your, uh, what you got coming up, maybe <laughs> she's going to have a whole series about, okay, wives with motherhood and all kinds of good stuff beyond. But, um, but even just tackling just the relationship aspect is very important because again, it's better than just giving up on your marriage. It's better mm -hmm. than, you know, stepping out of your marriage and things of that nature It's you know, um, empowering to, yes. to you know make some changes and and watch things shift prayerfully you know and so I, i'm excited it sounds like you got some great stuff going i mean like so what else should we be looking out for when it comes to you miss christy it's very exciting um well i would love for people to find me on facebook and i have a private uh group for women mm -hmm. where you can learn more and i do live videos in there every monday and okay. then I have a website also where women can sign up and receive the five mistakes that wives make when they're mm. trying to get their husband's attention, mm. you know? So mm. that's good stuff too. But you know what? You brought something up. Um, I think the enemy would, would want us to quit, right? The enemy would want us to say, I'll just go and find somebody else, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what do you and I know? 
about the other person that we're going to find. We know that they're flawed and sinful too, right? Mm -hmm. So what are Mm -hmm. we doing? We're just trading one set of sins for another one. It doesn't make any sense, people. (laughs) Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And then just sp- it's spreading. And then, you know, you got blended. Fa- Don't get me wrong about blended family stuff like that. I mean, I, you know, I, my family ended up blended because blended um, my father passed before I was born. And so mm-hmm. my mom did get married again. And so, you know what I mean? So technically, that's the quote unquote blended family or whatever. So I'm not looking down on situations or whatever. Right. But what I'm saying is some of the stuff is unnecessary, you know, <laughs> like, yes. you know, when you could have not to say fault for your marriage, but yeah, you know, um, I think we just take those vows and stuff so lightly. We just, I guess, want the party of the wedding or whatever. And we're not thinking about the, what the marriage will entail. So, you know, you know what my my best friend's mom used to say, she would always say, you can just get glad in the same pants you got mad in. (laughs) Yes, I mean, you know, because again, yeah, some things can be talked through and stuff like that. I mean, and worked through and everything. Um, I know sometimes it can get hard because you're like, you sometimes you just think you know, right, what needs to be done, and then you're like, why don't you just do it (laughs) or whatever. But I mean, again, um, I think it like you we've been saying it this whole time that I think the most empowering thing you can do is to say, okay, I can't change the other person. I, for example, I can't change my husband. What what can I do? Um and in the midst of that, you know, praying for that person, you know, and honestly, a lot of times again, the stuff we take to our spouses is what we're supposed to be probably taking to the Lord. Oh, really. Yeah. You know, they can't handle like he that. can't handle all this now, you know. He can't handle all this and all these words. I got to give some of them to the Lord. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, like, so Lord, it's so funny. I had a previous guest um, and he was talking about him and his wife and things like that. He's like, sometimes I just tell the Lord, that's your daughter. That's your daughter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. sometimes we got to go to the Lord. And I think that's probably why we can see things, you know, um, if you are seeing things about your spouse, whatever the case may be, then the God is probably showing you to give you that. So you can know what to pray for, you know, what to come to him about um, in regards to your spouse. And, you know, I don't know if that's one of the tips, but I mean, that that could be a way to see things, um, you know, shifting and changing rather than, again, going to the spouse, nagging them. You ain't doing this. You ain't. Lord, you know, I'm feeling this way about X, Y and Z. And, you know, can you help me help him? You know, things of that nature. Like, I don't know. You know, let's take some responsibility. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Well, I don't want to be long your time, Miss Christy, but is there anything else you would like to share with us before you go? I think we've covered it, Miracle. It's been such a joy um, talking with you and, and hearing your thoughts on this and all the things that God's doing in your life. Very exciting. I can't wait to hear how it continues. Oh, thank you so much. And I, I appreciate you visiting. Um, you're definitely welcome back to come anytime. Um, you bring the heavy back too. Look, look, this 30 year thing is amazing. So congratulations again on that. And your the sounds of your beautiful family and everything like that. I'm excited for all of you all as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching the GSL Talk Show. And thank you to Miss Christy for joining us tonight. I hope that you guys enjoyed this conversation. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And check out her relationship endeavors all right she knew she told y'all she got that group okay she got the website and she got them coaching services so go ahead and check her out have a good night